Hey, it's Joel. Normally, if someone invites you into the bathroom to come look at something they've made, it's a disastrous decision, and you should never do it unless you want to see epic amounts of brown. But in this case, you're going to want to see this because we've made art. This was once a wall that needed paint to be fixed, but instead it's become something beautiful. We're going to talk about a way to preserve this using Fusion 360 and a 3D printer. And we're going to do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored by Skillshare. Ah, welcome back. Uh, this is art right here. Our daughter Riley saw this missing paint on the wall and rather than ask to paint it, she <laughs> grabbed a couple post-it notes and she made this. This is a llama, obviously. I took a picture and I posted it across social media and it exploded. People loved it. Lots of likes, lots of comments. A lot of people said to save it. They said to cut out the wall. I'm not gonna do that. Other people said to make a frame, put around it. I think that's a better idea. And we can use Fusion 360 and 3D printing to do that. The first step in doing that is to define scale. And I have a tape measure right here, centimeters, as you might notice. If we put it right here and we take a picture, what we can do is import that picture into Fusion 360 and we know how to scale the picture properly so that when designing, we're using real world dimensions. We took that picture and we put the tape measure against it so we could know scale of our drawing. And now that we're in Fusion 360, we can, we can do this. So we're gonna insert an attached canvas. We've covered this before. So I'm gonna choose that plane I'm gonna select the image and I'm gonna open it and I'm just gonna hit okay. I'm gonna click the top up here and then I can zoom way, way in. And look at that, we've got, we've got scale. So over here I can hit the right mouse button and choose calibrate. I'm just gonna zoom way, way in. And from here to here, I know it is one millimeter. There it goes. Oh, that's perfect, so good. Now uh, we have scale, we have dimension. So everything we draw here is gonna relate to real world dimensions. I'm gonna create a new sketch. It's gonna be on this plane. And so <laughs> there's two schools to this. There's the pre-Joel that was learning and there's the Joel that knows now. So originally what I was doing is bringing this out like this. And then I, I hit O for offset and I, I clicked here and I brought it out, I believe it was minus 10 millimeters. And then I hit this and I hit E for extrude and I brought it up. 10 millimeters. That's how you would think to make a frame. That's kind of a boring frame. I wanted some decoration to it. I wanted some cool lines and stuff. And I thought, well, I've got this. One of the first things I should do is probably, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll create a sketch right there. And uh, let's see, we'll choose the, the, the box. We'll make it 10 by 10. Okay. And in here, uh, we'll, we'll sketch and we'll go spline, uh, fit point spline. So let's see, we'll go down here. Okay, and then maybe we come down here, we go up, and then we go something like that, and then, okay, so that looks kind of cool, right? That looks kind of cool. So if I stop the sketch, I click here, I hit E for extrude, and I bring it, whoa, all the way back, all the way, just all the way back. And that cuts it, and that makes that interesting part of the frame. But now I have to figure out how to do this same thing and extrude it this way, and then I need to make the corners join up, and it's, oh, it's so hard to do. And it's the wrong way to do it. I figured it out, thanks to the internet, a better way to do it. Let's bring this all the way back. How about right to there? And turn on that. And I can do that. Perfect, okay. This was the original thing that I did. First, we, we, we imported the, the picture, we scaled it correctly, and then we kind of traced a box around the inner perimeter of that, uh, the frame itself that we want. Oh, I wish I, <laughs> I spent so much time, but I'm thankful I found the right solution. So now let's create a sketch and let's do it on this plane. Now you can see that right there. See that little dot? That little dot right right there. It's on a different plane, but we can still poke it or it might be on the same plane. I don't know. So I'm going to click front right here and right here, right here. I'm going to I'm going to go up to here, this this two point box and see how it grabs that point. I'm going to bring it out and I'm going to go 10 and 10 just like that. Easy enough. Bring it in close. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go line and I'm going to bring it out here. Okay, 
and I'm going to bring another line out uh, here. So the reason I'm bringing these lines out, these are the I want to make sure that there's a flat spot here, and I want to make sure that there's a flat spot there. And then when I go up to sketch and uh, spline fit point, I, I can go here. So then I can bring this down, I can bring it up, and then down. So that way I have a perfectly flat over there and a perfectly flat there, and the spline isn't making it all funny. Click that check mark. I think you know where I'm going with this. Stop the sketch. So we've got a sketch on this plane. It's a box. And we've got a sketch on this other plane. Do you know where we're going? I hope you do. Because what we're going to do is we're going to create a sweep. A sweep takes a, a, uh, a profile and it sweeps it along a path. So if we define, there it is. If we define the path as this box, the inner perimeter of the frame, then the profile, we just need to say, well, this and this and this and this, and then we hit OK. And just like that, oh my goodness, we have ourselves a frame. Look at that. It's perfect. It's literally, look at it. Look at it. It took that profile that we wanted for our frame or essentially our extrusion and it brought it around a path. That's great. Look at the corners. This is this is where it's perfect. There's the corner. Oh, it looks so good. Okay. I want to print this out on my Prusa i3 Mark III, and this is bigger than the bed dimensions. And so what we need to do is cut the frame in a way that will allow us to place it on the bed. And here's, here's how I'm going to do that. The model workspace, instead, I'm going to go to the patch workspace. And this allows us to make zero thickness slices into things. So what I can do, I'm going to rotate to this side, and I'm going to split the body. Body to split and splitting tool. So... Uh, I can choose this body to split, but I need a splitting tool. On the side, we need to create the cutting tool, and the cutting tool is just a sketch. It's, it's a sketch that you need to then bring through the entire model. So what I'll do is find midpoint, which is defined by that triangle, and I'll bring a line down just like this. And then if I zoom in a bit, I can find the midpoint here, and I can bring a line out, and I want it to be 30 degrees. That is my goal, which means uh, 30 away from 90 would be 60. There we go. And then if I go here and I bring another line out like this, I know 60, just like that. Now we have uh, a cutting tool. So what I believe I can do from here is go to modify split body this is the body and the splitting tool is going to be this line and this line right here and it's great because it automatically selects it and it's going to extend that splitting tool through the body so i'm gonna hit okay and look we now have this body and we have this body so this right here is at a slight angle the machine should be able to print that totally easily, and we won't have any problems. Uh, I guess, though, we do need to split the other way. So I think we'll just do the same thing. So I'll go here, I'll create a sketch, and I'll hit L for line, and I will find the midpoint, which is defined by that triangle. There it is. I'll bring this down, and then I'll zoom in a bit. I'll find the midpoint there. I'll go up. 60 because the then uh, gives me that 30 degrees right there and i'll hit l i'll bring this out 60. And i'll hit stop uh modify split body this body oh and don't forget now that we have two remember you have to select the other one as well and then the splitting tool is going to be these lines here and if you look it's bringing it through it's bringing it through both bodies i'm going to hit okay wow there we have it. Uh, that's a lot more simple than I thought. The sweep tool is fantastic. And uh, originally I thought it had to be some sort of circular path or some sort of organic path, but the sweep tool actually worked on a square <laughs> and it was able to calculate the angles just fine. Those 90 degree angles where, the, where everything was intersecting, it's great. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna export this, we're gonna send it to the Prusa Mark III and we're gonna print it out in some high five blue. We'll see how it looks. As you know, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. It's an online learning community with 25,000 different courses for business and creativity and more. And premium membership gets you unlimited access so you can learn at your own pace and learn as much or as little as you want. 
The course that I really liked for this was something called Make Your Videos Pop, and it had to do with color correction, and it was put on by Marshall Rimmer. And I like how he introduced color correction and color grading in a very simple manner that let me understand exactly what was going on with the video and how I needed to correct for best results. Of course, I also have a Sean, and he thought parts of it were valuable as well. So maybe you'll like it too. The first 500 people that click the link in the description will get a two-month trial absolutely free. Head on down to that link below and thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Printing is done. Hey Sean, do you have the, the print bed for me? Thanks. Look at that. It turned out great. This is some random Hatchbox wood PLA printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III with an E3D heat break. It's beautiful really. Poets should write words about this. It looks great. Let's see. All right, we've got Magigoo on deck, and uh, thanks to safety, I've got gloves because, my goodness, that Magigoo will mess you up. Uh, now I just have to figure out how this all goes together. And, nope. Uh, <laughs> yes, oh, yes. Oh, it's so perfect. I mean, it's not gonna look perfect like a frame, uh, but we took advantage of the print bed that we had to use, and this is it. So. Let's glove up and let's get this all put together. Doctor? Doctor? Doctor. Doctor. Uh, with 3D Gloop, I'm going to assume that it will work on the wood PLA. I don't know how much wood is in this PLA. I'm going to try this one first. That's pretty good. I'm just going to hold it there for a few moments because I think what they do is they take refined unicorn horn and they add it to local honey so it's hypoallergenic and then it holds the PLA together. Oh, there it is. I might need to get some more gloop. It's a little gloopy. I know that at Murph, they had this smaller applicator. Uh, I might have to get my hands on that. I really glooped that up, didn't I? I wonder if it'd be better if I set it down like that. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is a frame for the bathroom to highlight uh, ripped paint that has been made into art. So if it doesn't look perfect, I think that's on, on brand. No joke, this is actually turning out better than I thought it would. <laughs> it's still a little loosey-goosey. Okay, I think it's at a point where we can just kind of let it sit. That's, it's pretty glooped up. Should I, what do you think? Should I put some on here? Yep. Of course I should. I figured you'd say that. I need one of those little applicators because I'm just like, I'm just spreading it around. That's not terrible. Oh, oh wait, wait. I guess we'll let the goop cure, or the gloop cure a bit, and uh, we'll come back to it in five minutes or so. See you in a bit. Well, we waited the five minutes or so, and we have ourselves a frame that's pretty darn sturdy. Uh, the gloop did kind of leak out in, uh, in the bottom, but that's okay. It's okay, I have some 220 grit sandpaper, and what I can do is just lightly go over the area. <laughs> I think there are some parts on here, if you can see that, I think I can just kind of pick off with my thumbnail. Okay. I mean, art was made from paint missing on the wall. Why not have a frame that's been glued together? It smells like wood. Okay, so there are some wood particles in there. I have an idea. I have an idea. So, let's just, let's just kind of rough it up a little bit, and then we can take it downstairs and stain it real quick. And then let's get this up on the wall so we can properly display our bathroom artwork. Here it is. This is the frame. And this is the frame stained. And it's interesting. It makes total sense when you think about it, but where the 3D gloop got out of the joints, the 3D gloop doesn't stain. The rest of the wood PLA from Hatchbox did stain, and I think it improved the look of it. So if I had one of those tiny little applicators from 3D gloop that I could just do micro dosages in, in the joints, it would have worked better for this application. Or maybe if I would have cleaned it up better, I don't know. But I think what we have Looks fantastic. It's time to go put it in the bathroom. Let's go. We've got the frame prepared and we're back in the bathroom. And honestly, it looks better than I could have possibly imagined. I wanna do more frame exploration. And I think having a larger print bed, print bed. I think having a larger print bed will give us a better frame and a larger frame. And I don't know, we'll see what we can do. For now, let's test it out. 
So good. Let's see. I've got some Loctite. I've got some Loctite. We're just going to glue it to the, uh, to the wall. I don't know if it's going to hold on to the paint. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. There we go. There we go. And just like that, we've upgraded our bathroom. We've taken advantage of the artwork created by Riley and we've given it a proper frame. The frame turned out better than expected and we've glued it to the wall. So it's going to be there forever. Thanks for joining me on this and I hope you learned something. If you'd like to see more about this, leave comments down below and we'll read every single one. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always. You didn't glue that, did you? High five. Like me and that Elmo gif, right? Gonna get poo out.